I think you know why you are here. Everyone wants to know what God is. And everyone wants to know where we come from. And that's the reason why we came here, actually. That's the reason why we came to this planet, the so-called planet, physical planet. Even though, at the same time, we are connected with heaven and spiritual planets, if we call that. But because we have forgotten the connection, so many of us, or most of us, have just recognized this physical presence and this physical life we call human life. In fact, we are not just human, we are also spiritual beings, we are highly developed beings. At the same time we are living here, we are also living in different levels of consciousness. We are also doing so many great things. But it is difficult for most of us to realize that. Our ancestors, for example, the ancestors of the Maori people that you have just seen, uh, that they have sung so beautiful songs, so spiritually developed, so highly elevated, so solely songs, because our ancestors has known a different level of uh, spirituality than some of us do today. But we still can develop this quality again. Not really develop, we can still remember it again. Because what we once had, we will not lose it. It just sometimes we forget. So in order for us to remember, we should... Um, I will give you some some practical experience after I explain a little, if you would like to. Because if we experience it ourselves, it's better than thousands of theoretical words. But uh, I feel I should introduce it a little bit, even though God is not to be explained in language. But just like the Maori ancestors, they have known God, they have known spiritual levels that exceed our language, that go beyond our ordinary understanding. Therefore, they could express themselves in poetry, in music, in songs, which are so beautiful, so out of ordinary, and so touching to the soul when you hear it. It is because they express their own inner level of enlightenment. For lack of this inner enlightenment, of because of forgetting this inner enlightenment and our true selves, we often cannot express ourselves in beautiful ways, in the way that we would like ourselves to express. And we sometimes could not behave or react in such a way that we would like ourselves to do. It is because we have forgotten the inner connection. We have forgotten that our lives, our so-called being, is uh, <laughs> greater, greater, longer and higher and more, 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 more multiple faces, multiple qualities, multiple house expressions than just this physical being that we know ourselves to be. We have forgotten that. For example, uh, the whole being here is me, like from head to toe, yes, the whole being. I'm not just a toe, I'm not just a finger, I'm not just a forehead, the whole being is me. But if I just remember my toes or my fingers, then I am not complete. Then it's not me. 
it's not complete. Similarly, if we just remember that we are a physical human being, then we are not complete. I am here today with the honor of God's permission and endowment to remind us, our fathers and mothers, and brothers and sisters, and little brother, little sisters, <laughs> that we should remember our whole being, and I show you how. It is very simple to remember, more simple than breathing, more simple than eating. Breathing, sometimes we have difficulty. If we have a blocked nose, we can't breathe. <laughs> eating, if we have indigestion, we can't eat. Or if we don't have enough money to buy food, we are also in trouble. But spiritual, spiritual wealth is always there. We always have it. It's just we too busy looking at outside, remembering our physical body, taking care of too many mundane duties. The world makes us very, very concentrate in the physical and material aspects that we have hardly time to remember our 99% of our being, which is higher, greater, more powerful, more miraculous, more wondrous, more everything, more holy, more divine, more beautiful, more happy, more blessed, more blissful. Everything that is godly, that is us. All the teachers have come here, they told us like that, that we are the temple of God and God lives here. God lives there. So all we see here is God or at least God's manifestation individually, differently. But we have forgotten that God quality, that God natural of ourselves, and we just remember this small part of our being, which is the human side of ourselves. Just like because I like this ring so much, I keep looking at the ring and I just remember this finger all the time and, you know, I forget everything else about myself. And this is not how we should do it. So that, that is why we don't know God, because we have forgotten to look where we should look. That is all. That is why we often tell people enlightenment is immediate because you're already there. Suppose that I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the finger now. How long does it take me to know myself? If I don't look here, how long does it take me? One second, right? Not even. Okay, as long as I don't look here, I remember again, ah, here I am. Oh, all of this is me. <laughs> yes. It's very simple. Therefore, no one is your teacher. I'm not coming here to be your teacher <laughs> because you are already divine. I have also forgotten at the age of three or four, we begin to forget. Sorry, my English is getting rotten. You see, even English I have forgotten. Because I speak so many languages every day, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, sometimes German, sometimes French, you know, everything. And I forgot English also. Similarly, I even forgot Vietnamese. <laughs> yes, I don't speak as fluently as when I was in Vietnam. And I don't speak Chinese as fluently as when I was still in Taiwan, because we're out of practice. Similarly, if we do not try to remember the great being that we truly are, then we will forget. And that's why it is very easy to forget, and also it is easy to remember. I'm coming here to remind you of the good news that I have remembered, that I have remembered myself. So we, we can all remember any time we want. 
And should we choose to stay in forgetfulness? This also is also fine. It's also fine. Because you are divine. You are God. I'm sorry if, if I might shock you in any way, but that's, that's what you are. If you don't believe me, look back in the Bible and the Buddhist scriptures say you are the Buddha. Buddha nature is inside you. The Bible says God lives within this temple. So who is in there? Who else except God? If we are only the temple and God is the only one who lives in there, who, who are we then? Except we are God. Okay, we don't remember, fine, but we still are God. So whatever we choose to do, the God of all gods <laughs> that we are, respect that. The Father of all of these beings, which we are, respects our wish and our choice to live, to express our divine selves in whichever way we want. That is why Jesus told us we do not judge people, because we do not know what is the path that that being has chosen to walk. He does his things so that he might come to know God in a different way. He might choose to be a seemingly bad person. He might choose to be a seemingly very lowly person. He might choose to be seemingly a very so-called immoral person. But that is his way of knowing the divine. By choosing to be ungodly, he will one day know that this is not him. He has to go back and learn that the whole being again. Because if we always stay in heaven and we are God all the time, we will not recognize ourselves as God. So we need to lower ourselves, for example, come down to this physical level so that we can once again recognize the greatness of ourselves. And that is our choice. And that's why we came here. So the answer to our question, why are we here, is because we want to know God. So when we feel that the time is up, it's the time that we choose to remember ourselves again. That is the time when we come to seek out uh, spiritual friends, spiritual groups, or maybe spiritual teachers, as we call them, so that we can remember quickly, because we have forgotten how to remember and where to look for. So some friend who has already remembered himself or herself may be able to help us. And then we recognize that we are nothing else but the Supreme Being, but God. We recognize the Supreme Being that lives, that is housed within this body. But actually, <laughs> actually he is not housed within the body. He housed our body. <laughs> but then again, because spiritual terminology is never a very exact science, so no matter how much a teacher tells us about God, how eloquently a spiritual friend might express about the divine being within ourselves, we cannot just understand by listening. So the spiritual friend or a teacher or the guide or a friend have to show us uh, practically, not just theoretically. For example, when Jesus came to our planet, he taught his disciples both ways, theoretical way and practical way. And that's why later his immediate disciples could also do wonders, could also see heaven, could also hear the voice of God, 
the word of the Creator. He could not so see the light of heaven. He could ascend to heaven and even see the angels or see the Father. The Father spoke to them, like the Father spoke to Moses, and the angels also spoke to them. Likewise, we could do that. Because as great as Jesus' disciples, we are also great. We and Jesus' disciples, same, equally. Because Jesus said to us that we are all children of God. But because we have forgotten. So sometimes one friend, two friends have to come to remind us. But only when we are ready. Because if we are not ready, no one can do much for us. You would like to ask me some questions now, or you want to have a glimpse of heaven? <laughs> How many heaven? How many? <laughs> okay, fine, fine, okay. It's very simple. I will show you. But uh, the work is yours, okay? I can only show you, but you must work, <laughs> right? I cannot work for you. It's a little bit. Not very quiet here, but I have show you. You come home and do it, okay? You will enjoy. Enjoy. Okay, you have any question? Okay, bring, bring the first ones. I'm sorry because of shortness of time, but you could do this at home, yeah? Have any one of you see some lights at least? So quick. Yeah? Have you? Raise your hand. Light. Or, oh, yeah, thanks. That's good. Wow, that's, that's good just for <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> You're quick. <laughs> You're very pure. That's why. Very pure in such a not quiet environment and just two seconds you still can see. I told you, yes, we, we can get immediate enlightenment. Some of you see some heaven scenery or not? Yes? Raise your hand. Yeah? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, questions, please. In the last days, many false Christs will appear. Again? <laughs> <laughs> showing great signs and wonders so as to lead, if possible, even the elect astray. How, without being initiated, can one tell whether you are true or false? You can't. You can't tell whether I'm true or false, so it's up to you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, of course, but there are some, some little things that you can tell. For example, not because of me, if you meet a master, you immediately feel something, right? Or you don't. Either you feel something good about that person or you don't. We do have this intuition. Even sometimes we see a stranger in the street, we feel like, oh, yeah, she gives me good vibes. She's lovely. She must be a good person. And some person we just see for the first time, we feel kind of, we don't want to talk to that person. We are a little scared. Yes, we have this intuition. Or else we come home and pray to God, please God, let me know who is a good one. Yeah? And then you follow your heart. Hmm? No one else can tell you. Yeah? <laughs> you can only tell from outside, but inside you cannot. Unless you go into a higher spiritual level, then you can see me like a mirror. But from human to human standard, you cannot see anything. I'm not here to prove to you that I am good or bad. I'm here to tell you that you are great, you are good. And if you follow my instructions, you will feel, you will see, you will know that you are great, you are good. Forget about me, I'm good or bad has nothing to do with you. Just so that you feel good, that's all. Yeah? You feel that you're great, that you know God. And suppose you don't feel like that, you can always leave. I don't charge any money, I don't follow you to your house, I don't call you at all. <laughs> I'd be gone tomorrow. And you'll be lucky to ever catch me again. So don't worry if I'm bad or good. <laughs> Follow your instinct. Learn to know, to remember your greatness. That's what I'm here for. Not here so that you think I'm great. Okay? That's a different question. 
am here to show you that you are great. Yeah? And if you want to know your greatness, then just follow my instruction. Not follow me, follow my instructions. Yeah? Okay? Should our children be vegetarians too, Master? Thanks. Yes, because children also have souls and they're also God. So if they wish to be, that means they're okay. We can talk logically and reasonably, and if they want to, they can be, they should be. Because children who are vegetarians are very healthy. Hey, look at me, I'm pretty. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look at her, she is so beautiful. She looks like a movie star and she's vegetarian, no? Is she not beautiful? Yeah. Our fellow initiates, when they are pregnant, the babies are vegetarians from the mother's womb already. And when they are born, they are the most beautiful babies if you compare to other babies nearby. They're born pinky, healthy. And other children, sometimes they're born blue and, you know, purple. Yeah, really, really. No, you, you go and, and, and take a look at newborn babies. Sometimes they're so blue, so dark, but our children are always born pinky, healthy, and cry the loudest. <laughs> yeah. This next question is playing a game of blankety blanks, asking you to fill in the rest of the sentence. Can you please explain what should be the aim of human life? We should meditate to achieve... And that's the question. The aim of human life is to know yourself, to know that you are God, that you're connected with God. Yeah? And we meditate in order to calm this busy, busy thinking mind so that we can recognize the true self behind this mind. Just you like to recognize the driver, not the car. Yes, sister. I would love to know the truth. However, it seems strange to stop drinking wine, etc. Oh, Whereas, is it? <laughs> <laughs> then she goes on. Whereas all the cakes and white sugar products are as harmful, I always experience that it is more important to have a real thirst. I just want to know what to put first in every moment. What to put what? What to put first in every moment. What should be the first? What, what is the priority? Yeah. God is the priority, not the wine. <laughs> okay, you bargain all the time. <laughs> you like to know God, but you like to enjoy all these poisons. I don't know why you like wine so much. All this alcohol has been proven that they're damaging to the brain cells. They numb your nerves, they make you less intelligent and important. <laughs> if you like to continue drinking this kind of poison and pay a lot of hard, sweating, earned money for it, welcome. Hmm? If you want to know God, forget that. Yeah, it's just a little wine compared to great heaven and the whole universe. They are better than wine, stuff are better than wine. When you meditate and you are in ecstasy, it's better than getting drunk and hang over, really. Next one. Would Master please enlighten us as to the spiritual path of animals? Do domestic animals such as cats and dogs choose a situation in life which will assist them spiritually, can they achieve supreme enlightenment? They will in their own time. Animals are great friends of men. Sometimes a dog, a cat can teach us wonderful, unconditional love lessons. So they have chosen to be animals. So for us, for our sake, we should love them, assist them, and take care of them. And whatever, whenever they at attain enlightenment, that's their own choice. They will, they will get there whenever they want to. Okay? <laughs> they know. I have always talked to Kuan Yin by talking to the stars, but I always believed I was talking to a goddess, as I am a spiritual person, not religious. What is the difference? 
What is the difference between a religious and a spiritual person? Mm. Is that right? Yeah, she believes she's talking to a goddess and asking, I'm a spiritual person, not religious. What is the difference? I don't, to the Kuan Yin. I don't really know. I think we look in the dictionary and see what's in the difference. <laughs> huh? <laughs> to me, a spiritual person is the one who aspires to know his origin, and not only aspiring, but knowing also, experiencing his own divine quality, his own God inside. That is a true spiritual or even true religious person. What can I do to keep up meditation daily when there is not enough waking hours in the day? Can I wake up? Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Nobody likes to wake up when we're stuck in bed, but we have to try. Yeah? Suppose if you have to get up to work, then you must. You must. For like $2,000 per month, you wake up every morning, five o'clock. Yeah? For God, you don't wake up. <laughs> So what am I to do? Hmm? So make your own priority choice. We can wake up a little earlier than usual and then get used to it. For example, okay, ah, it's too early to get up at three o'clock. Don't wake up at three o'clock. Normally you wake up to work at five o'clock. Okay, then wake up like 20 to five the first day, or 10 to five even, or even five to five. And the next day or next week, 10 to 5. Yeah? Get yourself used to with the idea and reward yourself abundantly. Tell yourself, okay, if you wake up early today, I'm going to give you a double, double bagel, for example. Yeah. Or one more cup of cafe latte. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever your mind loves to have, reward it. Reward yourself. You must love yourself also, because let's face it, we have only one, this physical body, and we are so tired sometimes. We work so hard, eight hours, ten hours a day, just to keep this machine running. And then we have to attend to, you know, sometimes other work like family, wife, children and parents, friends, neighbors, relatives, etc. We really are very hard demanding on this physical body. So, of course, if you cannot wake up in the morning for meditation, forgive yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself, but train yourself slowly. Uh, watch TV less, you know, sleep a little earlier so you can get up better. Or whatever the activities you used to do too much before in order to pass the time when you are bored, use that time for knowing God. It is a matter of organization. I'm also pretty busy. You don't believe it. I sit here looking pretty, but I'm very busy too. And it's hard for me also to get up early sometimes. But you have to put an alarm clock, yeah? Sometimes it's like that. Uh, in the old Indian tradition, there was one saint. He also you know, <laughs> he wakes up all right, but, you know, he sleeps sitting instead of lying, so it's just the same. <laughs> our people are the same, you know. When you go to our retreat, they come to my house, they sit there, look very good, but... So, <laughs> yeah, they sit any fashion, you know. <laughs> so never mind, you try your best, yeah? That's what counts. So that person, the saint in India, you know, what he did, he has a long hair like me, and he tied his hair, onto the ceiling or something. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> and then he became a master. Yeah, because he tried so hard. He tied his hair onto the ceiling, so whenever he not, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should grow your hair long or do that, but <laughs> you find your way, yeah? Like we wake up early and in the beginning, I had to put like ice water next to me, you know, a flask of ice, 
And then when the alarm rang, I reached for the eyes and threw oil on my face. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the eyes, come, the eyes come through your clothes and everything, and you just had to jump out of bed. <laughs> but don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. I mean, you have your own ways. But when you want to do something, you can. Believe me, you can. Because you are God. There's nothing impossible with God. Just remember that you have God inside you and now no one else is there. Don't listen to the mind and the brain. It's just a computer. Yeah. The mind tells us, oh, sleep, sleep, sleep is good for you. <laughs> but that's not God's voice. God is behind that. Yeah. Do you ever meet with Kuan Yin? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? You can see all the saints from the past if you want to. But you have to work hard. Tie your hair to the ceiling. <laughs> now you know why many yogis in India they have long hair, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah? As we are spiritual beings having a human experience, we are a perfect innate expression of life. We are already divine. If God is everything without duality, then everything we are, everything we do, is an expression of God. So do we need then to do nothing, just to be without reward? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine too. As I said earlier, you chose to be what you want to be. But there are many aspects of God, you see? God is a total sum of our being, yes? So if we want to say that we are God, of course we are already God, that is for sure. But then go back to the finger, see? Suppose we say, okay, I'm God now, I don't need to do anything, it's fine. But then we go out and steal, or we, or we do things that's not proper, and, uh, or we harm other beings, because we say every expression is God anyway. So we don't try to be better. We don't try to represent ourselves in all the aspects of divine quality and just concentrate on one point and do the physical things. And in that case, even though we are God, we have not the whole complete quality. We have not expressed ourselves in the whole complete way. So that is the only difference. Once we know the whole thing, the total sum of God, we act differently. We don't just look at the finger, we know the whole being, and that is different. If I just sit here and look at the finger, I look different, you know? Why, my God, nice finger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I know my whole being, then I stand up, I walk, see? I sing, I embrace people, I greet people with love, I write poetry, I play music. Yeah? I go swimming. I do all kinds of things which is the whole being would do. You see? But if I keep looking at one finger only, I still have the whole being here, but it's useless. See what I mean? That's the difference. That's the difference between knowing the whole being of God and just saying, okay, whatever I do is God anyway. Yeah. But of course, you are divine already, so you choose what you are doing. I'm just answering your question. The next yeah. question is in two parts. Where in the Himalayas did you learn your spiritualism? Oh, that mm. is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> what guided you to go there? My inner, inner self. I was blind, blindly in love with God. I would not advise you to go there because you might not come back. It's very dangerous places where I went. Uh, I have talked about that some, some time before I remember, right? So maybe you just search out for those tapes or something and listen, okay? Dear Master Ching Hai, would you please explain ghosts to us? Ghosts? Mm, do you uh. And then asks, do you believe in them? Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> do you see ghosts? Any one of you see ghosts? Raise your hand. Oh, what do they look like? Huh? Great? Then they are not ghosts, they are angels. 
Okay, what she mean, the, the person who asked mean the ghost who's scary, right? Okay, there are different levels of life, as I have told you before. Even us, we are also part human, part ghost. But we only know that when we die. <laughs> Actually, there are just different levels of living. See, for example, here uh, we live as human beings, there's other live as worms and ants, and then other level of consciousness, they don't live with this physical body, they live with an astral body. And uh, some people who die uh, live within that astral body, which looks exactly like his body right now. So sometimes he thinks he's still a human being, I mean a physical being. So he comes and talks to people, he tries to throw tantrums because nobody listens to him. Nobody even knows <laughs> that he exists. He goes through people, goes through wars, and he talks to everyone, and he tries to get back his possessions and his loved ones. And he was very frustrated sometimes, and then he, he, he scared people. He used all his spiritual might to, to, to manifest in something, and that's when we say we see ghosts. Yeah. Otherwise, there's nothing scary about ghosts. And these so-called ghosts, after some time, they will realize that they're so-called dead, meaning they don't have physical body anymore, and nobody understands them anymore. Then they will begin to also turn inward or seek help from angels, or some beings will go take care of them. It's like police in, in our planet. Yeah, and then they will be gone, gone somewhere that they belong. Like maybe go to heaven, maybe go to lower heaven, or higher heaven depends on their merit and their understanding at that time. How many times do we need to come to this planet before we become enlightened? And where do we go when we are not in a physical body? We come as many times as we choose to come. We choose to come. Yeah? For example, there are some people who are supposed to die already, but then some relatives are crying and loving and needing them so much, they come back to physical life immediately. That's a reborn, that's a resurrection. And sometimes we go to heaven already, but we like to uh, have the human beings experience again for our own uh, pleasure or our own development. And sometimes we come back because some loved ones are still there, calling us and wanting us to be with them. And we, we choose to come back. Yeah? And if we have not realized God in a physical body, sometimes we choose to come back so that we can realize God on a higher level. And if we are not in the physical body, we can go in many different places. We are more free, 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 like birds. We can fly anywhere in an instant. For example, if I die, and I want to go to Germany. We don't need an airplane. Just one thought will be there right away. One second, one instant. And that's, that is the freedom of not having a body. But nevertheless, if we have not trained ourselves during our lifetime to think highly, to remember our higher self, then when we die, we leave the physical body, we just linger on a lower level of ourselves without realizing the higher aspect of the divine self. So we might linger there and then we get born and then we come back to physical body again, or we might be lucky meeting some spiritual friend and then we inch our way up or we go back to the uh, physical body and get a teacher and learn properly and then go Pshit. Yeah. So it depends on what we chose to do in this uh, physical life. We will be at that level when we die. How do the real spiritual experiences in meditation differ from my own fantasies and visions created by my imagination? It could be that uh, you think that you are imagining, but uh, uh, imagining is a daydream. It's different. If you just daydream about something, or you dream a night dream about something, and uh, that is different. But the spiritual experience is real, just like we are real right now. For example, for example, during the spiritual experience, suppose I sit here, and then I can ascend to heaven. I can see Jesus. I can see the past saints or some present saints. 
I can converse with him and go to the different high level of hierarchy of heavens and universe in order to do things, to learn things, just like I take an airplane and go to your country, as real as that. And then our being will be better every day. And we can, we can use this spiritual knowledge to better our life and the life of our loved ones as well as uh, assisting in, in blessing and elevating the consciousness of the whole planet. And that is spiritual experience because we become different. We know ourselves as divine being. We know the whole self or maybe at least partial of the higher self and we become powerful. We become happy. After taking the initiation into the Kuan Yin method, if the person can't continue with a two and a half hours meditation daily, what will happen? What will happen if you don't work eight hours and you work only two hours? You have less money. You can find a part-time job or full-time job. You know, part-time job, you get less money. If you can make it, it's good for you. You try your best to do as much as you can. The more you do it, the better for you. We are just... Uh, helping you, telling you which is good, because the more you do it, the more you feel better. And the more you feel better, the more you're encouraged to do more, and you stay stable on the spiritual path. If a person decides to follow the Kuan Yin method and the family and others can't accept the person anymore, how does the person overcome this problem? It's not mm. possible like that. You just become better. Your family accepts you better more loving. Most of our people, after initiation, their families become better. They, because they themselves become also better. Maybe some of them in the beginning, because the family member loved them and worried that they might follow some bad people or do some bad things, but later, as you improve yourself, as you show yourself as such a loving, a tolerant and compassionate person, your family members will welcome you more. Okay, make it fast because sure. we need the initiation, huh? What is God? <laughs> yeah. Look at your neighbor. That's God. Part of God, yes. God is the divine being, the, the creator that makes everything possible that makes us, make the flowers, make the fruit, and make heaven, make earth. That's our Father. And that's ourselves. We are part of it. Part and the whole of it. Just like the ocean, a little part, the, the drop of the ocean, and the whole ocean. Even though a drop of the ocean is just a drop, but without that drop, the ocean is not the ocean. So we are a drop, but the whole. Yeah. What is the essence of life? Essence of life? Life. <laughs> well, there's so many abstract things. The essence of life is God. This is what I'm here to show you. Can you tell what was your before life and your after life if you're an enlightened person? Or me? I How do you? in general. <laughs> I mean, Can you? themselves? Oh, sure, sure, you can, you can, sure. Many of our uh, fellow practitioners, they, they, can, they can see their past and their future also during meditation. Oh, that's just a small stuff. It's no big deal. Big deal is to know God, to go to heaven, to be wiser person, to be more loving. Yes. This question is with regard to memory. If the answers are in remembering, is God a memory lost? If so, why is that? Oh, why? Because we have forgotten to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty straightforward. <laughs> okay. If we are God, who is this person that is so-called God, that it is coming down to earth that everybody talks about? <sighs> There is no person as God. Everything is God. We are the part of the whole, and yet the part that makes the whole. So um, God 
is the creator, you see, Has can make himself into different many, many things. You see, if the flowers smell nice, you have got to smell it. See, you can't you keep asking me a question like, what the rose smell like when you don't smell it? I just show you how to smell the rose before you try it at home, okay? Right? Then you'll know God. Or if you want to know more and deeper, you can stay for initiation. God is for you yourself to experience, not for me to describe, because this is impossible. This is impossible to describe the love, yeah, between two persons. You love your boyfriend, your husband, your wife. <laughs> you can't describe what it is, but it is there. Yeah? So even love is so difficult, just a physical love between human beings, so difficult to describe. How, how can we describe God? Because human language is not up to God's standard. <laughs> but you can experience, um. feel the love, feel yourself, feel the wisdom, feel the security, feel yourself at home. Anywhere you go, if you know God, that's all I can tell you. When we focus on the center between eyebrows, do the eyes also focus on the center? No, no, no. Forget the whole body, forget the whole body. Just your, your thinking is concentrating here only. Don't, don't pay attention to the eyes or, or anything in the body. The reason they ask is that they say that the eyes follow the center when they are concentrating. No, no, they don't follow. Did you ever see somebody who died? Okay, his eyes go up, yeah? So you see only the white, the white part of the eyes. That's when he died, okay? We can die like that during spiritual practice. That's why the saints say, I die daily. Forsake the flesh so that you can begin to know the spirit. Learn to die so that you can begin to live. When we are in samadhi, our eyes also turn upwards, but we don't even know it. We're gone. Yeah, I mean, gone to a higher dimension, enjoying. But the physical body is just dead, and that's why it reacted like a dead person. So when you come back, you pick up the car again and drive around. I mean, this car. <laughs> Master, why is it important to meditate in the morning? You can meditate any time. It's just in the morning, most of the people, you know, have a nice rest. And in the morning, uh, it is still quiet. No traffic, no noise, no children, no telephone ringing. But it doesn't mean you have to do it in the morning. I do it any time. Any time, yeah, on the bus, in the car. Our people, they do it anywhere, except when driving, please. <laughs> along the lines of driving, traveling to Auckland for initiation, my car engine blew up. Oh. Without warning, is this due to Maya? Wow, the car blow up because the engine is bad. That's what I thought. It's due to the engine, okay? <laughs> By the way, congratulations that you're still here to ask the question. <laughs> Many of us feel intense loneliness and feelings of the illusions of life. We are so tired of this, nothing makes any sense when we feel this way. There seems to be no point in anything except a desire to go home. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. We do feel that sometimes. Most of us feel that. It's just that because life keeps us so busy, we just have to drive on. And this very important question about our true home and about our great spiritual self-being is sometimes swept under the carpet, but it's always there. Every one of us wants to go home. I sometimes sense the guidance and presence of the Ascended Masters. Can they really help humanity from afar? Oh, sure. We are all one. So if you are enlightened, they are affected. Yeah. Can you imagine before, a long time ago, I mean after the Golden Age, our planet was all destroyed and not too many people survived. Can you imagine the state of human beings at that time? Everyone was kind of 
groveling in darkness, and they all affect each other. We all affect each other, and that's why we were the way we were. And now we have been practicing and practicing year after year. Now our planets become better. You don't feel it? You don't feel we have progressed? You do? Or not? Yes? Yes. I mean, not, not saying that you come and practice a quantum method or have experienced heaven. Even you have not. You can feel that our planet now has different energy. Different. It's, it's more happy, it's more open and very leger, in French, I leger, a very relaxed, huh? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, human beings are very different from before, before a uh, kind of few decades ago. And uh, our technology, science, everything is just blooming so fast. Uh, it's, it's very amazing what we have uh, discovered lately. Can you imagine? the email and all that, internet, and wow, this is incredible. So many other things that you don't know, they have already developed. Should we love our enemies? Well, what else to do with him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Practical question, if you kill him, his uh, wife might kill you, or his daughter and son like, will continue forever. So we better love our enemies. It's the best way to kill him. <laughs> yeah. If you love your enemy, he becomes your friend, and the enemy is gone for good. Yeah? And you have more friends for his family, his wife, his kids, and his relatives, his friends as well. Make one friend, you have many friends. Make one enemy, make many enemies. So, we lose business if we hate the enemy. <laughs> what happens if I break precepts after my initiation? Whew. Just like asking me what happens if, if I have an extra affair after I married my wife. <laughs> how, how shall I answer you? Make up your mind, okay? Nobody is here to force you. It's only you, yourself, and you. <laughs> And God, you make a covenant with God. You say, okay, I make you my priority. I will do anything to know you. I don't need all these stupid, uh, you know, things in order to survive. I can live without them. I can live without killing my neighbors. I can live without telling lies. I can live without drugs and alcohol. I'm strong. I don't need these substitute of intoxication. I can have divine intoxication. I can live without having to, uh, what I say, having uh, to, 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 to have sex with every man or girl that walks by. Yeah, make up your mind. Present yourself as a being you want to present. If you are the one who likes to present yourself to everyone else, oh yes, I am the one who tell lies. Yeah, I am the one who always drunk and <laughs> takes drugs and all that. I am the one who, 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 who you know, who converts neighbors' wife. I am the one who, who, who kills, who murder people. If that is the way we want to present ourselves, then go ahead. It's your choice. But if you want to present yourself as an enlightened being, as a wise person, as a happy being, as the helpful, compassionate, loving, truthful person, then there's that choice. You see, there are two choices. It's all your choice. <laughs> it's not my precept. It's the way of life. It's a choice you make to present yourself to the world, to God and to your own self. When you look in the mirror, what kind of person you want to see, okay? No precepts. Don't need precepts. You know what you want to be, right? If everyone is Buddha, why does everyone feel miserable, not happy? Yeah, because they are miserable Buddhas. <laughs> <laughs> they only know that miserable part, they don't know the other happy part, that's why. Yeah, okay. That's why I ask you to be enlightened, then you become happy Buddha. 
Although I understand the reasons for some people to be vegans or vegetarians and the health benefits, etc., I believe that meditation and enlightenment is for all regardless of diet, customs, and can take whatever form necessary for each individual. What is your answer to this? Cool. <laughs> cool, we all go eating pork and cow and become like, you know, Zoo Buddha or something. <laughs> we house all these animals in here and make a zoo out of us. You could <laughs> make a zoo out of yourself. <laughs> animals' energy is not very suitable for a spiritual being if he wants to go higher. The higher you go, the less luggage you must carry. And, uh, and animal energy is very heavy because they love life and they also fear death. Of course, animals are also a spiritual beings. They understand. If you are truly, really in a very desperate place and you need food and you talk to them, they will lay down their lives for you. Every one of them. It's just that most of us, we kill without mercy, we kill without reason, and we eat just for the sake of getting fat, I guess, not even getting healthy, excuse me. Yeah, and then spend a lot of money, go to club and diet and, you know, jumping up and down. <laughs> spend a lot of money and time to, to, get, uh, to get all this poison out of the system later and then go to hospital, get needles, get knives and get electroshock and all that, just because we eat too much what we should not do. Besides, all lives are one. So if we kill someone, it's like we cut our finger. It's just that we are blind right now, we don't see, we don't feel. Just like, just like a finger is numb, we don't feel the nerves. But we do hurt ourselves whenever we hurt anyone, even plants and all that. It is the minimum that we could do to survive, and that's why we eat vegetables. But vegetables, they have less fear, you see? They have 90% water. And if you cut one stem, they spring three, four, five more. So sometimes you even need to cut the head in order for the plant to grow bigger. So this is more logical that we could, uh, you know, rely on them to survive so that we can develop ourselves spiritually, but not without permission from all these plants. If we cut a plant or tree, we talk to them first. That's what we do. Say, I'm sorry, we need you with your permission, and we are grateful. And that's how we should eat even vegetables. We should be grateful for everything that we take physically from this life, because we're not making any of them, we just take them. But we must meditate in order to bless it, to bless the planet, so that it will grow back in abundance again. Does meditation work for those who steal and take drugs? Steal? Mm, if you're hungry. Drugs. If you are hungry, it's okay. And drugs, you don't need to take drugs in order to feel not hungry. So it's not a necessity. Yeah? Jesus said the one who steals for bread is not guilty. I say the same. But drug is a not a necessity, and it damages your body, your brain, and it damages the happiness of your relationship with your family and other friends. It's better to be away from it. Yeah? Today it's easy to cure yourself of drug addiction just and this yourself to drugs or alcoholics, anonymous, they help you. Hmm? Clean yourself so that you will be whole again. Thank you for coming to New Zealand. When we feel intense fear, what is the reason for this? What is life trying to tell us? It depends, it depends. If you are in a fearful situation, and that is all right to feel fear, but just we have to not let the fear overcome us so that we are paralyzed and do not know how to react a better way. Fear is a natural emotion. Fear, love are natural emotions. You don't have to suppress it. You just have to understand it and handle it. For example, you think I don't have fear? I do. I fear to come here and I didn't know what to talk to you. I fear that I didn't know how to make you understand what I understand. 
I really did fear. Today I arrived early and then I went to have tea in a, in a shop because I didn't have anything since yesterday. I just kind of couldn't eat on the airplane and I was very kind of tired physically because I had to rush up a lot of things in order to pack and then go. Yeah? And so I didn't sleep at all for you know, a long time. So I went on the airplane, I couldn't eat anything, just tried to sleep or quiet down. So this morning I was worried that way I might sleep again in the lecture hall. So I went and grabbed some tea. And then I saw a lot of people, they sat there and had tea and they talked about all kinds of things. And I was wondering, how am I going to, to tell all these people about God? Do they really care about God? They're so happy with their physical lives. Who, whom am I going to talk to and what? But then I still do it. You see, I have fear, but I, I go through it. Not that I don't have it. We have fear, but we have to go through it. If it is a fearful situation, we have to think, okay, what can we do to make it better? If it's a fearful person, we try to use love to overcome his own fear. The person who is sometimes bad to us makes us fearful because he himself is an insecure person. So it depends on the situation. Anyway, even if we have fear, we must calm down and think, okay, okay, I have fear, but now what must I do in this kind of situation to get myself out of this fear? You have to take control of yourself to get rid of the fear. Take control of yourself means, okay, deal with the situation so that we become secure better and then the fear will disappear. We cannot suppress the fear. We have to deal with it, make it better. Oh, are we okay with time? Because people mm -hmm. need because initiation. Not... Well, whoever likes to have a deeper uh, spiritual instruction and deeper, more commitment and wants initiation, uh, should leave and go out and, and uh, I would say, register yourself so we can call you later. We will know your name and call you later. And after this finish, we initiate here. Here, right? Here, then we have to clear up. Even though we can stay forever, but the people will sleep here if we stay too long. <laughs> All right? How many more questions? No, oh, there's at least another 30 here. Wow. 30. <laughs> 30. 30. <laughs> that takes a long time. Just go through fast and the important ones first, okay? Okay. It is my belief that we choose our parents. Is this correct? If so, why do some of us choose to be born in various religions that take a long path to God? That's the way we choose to do. Hmm? That's make up the varieties of this life. Otherwise, if everybody chooses the same thing at the same time, <laughs> then there's no need to choose anything. <laughs> Even though, you know, even those roses are the best flowers that people think are the best. We, are, we have chrysanthemums, we have peach blossom, etc., just for variety. No? It's cool. <laughs> what is your relationship with the Ascended Masters? They helped me. They're my friends. I am continuing their job. Colleagues. <laughs> yeah? If God is inside of me, then I am God. So when I want to do something dangerous, stupid things, does it mean God controls me or wants me to do these bad things, and should I do it? No. Nope. There's God inside us, but because we work through the brain, some, sometimes the brain is bad, you know, the, the computer damage, and that's why we do bad things. So if we think it is a bad thing, that means the God voice inside us told us not to do it. If you already know it's bad, that means it's bad. It's no good, don't do it, okay? Sometimes you drive your car, you have the first class driver license, and you drive perfectly, but sometimes your car, yes, thank you, sometimes your car damaged, you know, the engine kaput, yeah? Or the tire blows out. You cannot blame yourself for all this. It's not the driver, it's the car, see? So if it's good driving everything, then the driver good, the car is good. If the car blow out or everything, then the engine is bad, the car is bad, the driver is still good. So you make the distinction between a driver and the car, between God and the brain, then you'll be no problem. If it's bad, don't do it. If it's good, do it right away. Very simple. 
Yes. If there is a heaven and angels, is there such a thing as evil and demons? Yes, human beings do some evil things. Yes, there are some bad energies uh, hanging in the atmosphere, and sometimes we can feel it. But originally there is no devil, no, no evil. It's just because we sometimes think in a wrong way, think in a bad way, and all this generates these evil energies. And so sometimes we call this evil and it affects us. What do divine love and human love have in common? Mm, human love is a part of divine love, yeah? A small part, small part. And if two persons, when they love each other unconditionally, that is a divine love in action also. Do we go through many lifetimes and collect karmic debt along the way? Does reincarnation exist? Yeah, it does, it does. <laughs> We don't collect really karmic uh, deeds. We, we just experience different things. We have chosen to do this, to do that, just to experience. Yeah? And once we finish, we don't want no more, we return to God, we remember ourselves. That's when we become enlightened. Yep. What is the meaning when I occasionally see flashing purple light? Oh, that's good. That's spiritual. Uh, experience, but that's uh, not very high level, astral level. We have uh, many more levels beyond that, but it's good already that you already so concentrate alone by yourself that you can get some experience. Go ahead. Why is it that though we are all equal in God's creation, some of us suffer so much misery, while certain others though they have a life of evil misdeeds, materially prosper? Well, it's because different paths that we have chosen. Uh, when we gain material wealth or, or comfort, that doesn't mean we, we are blessed or we are anything good, because soon we die, we left everything behind. If we gain spiritual knowledge and wealth, that is the everlasting one. So do not envy those who only acquired material possession but have nothing for their soul because soon they will be empty. But you, even though you don't have much of material uh, acquisition, but a rich in your heart, have great love, great compassion, great knowledge, wisdom, like the Buddha, like Jesus, they were walking bare feet, they didn't have any money, they didn't have cars, they had nothing and people fell at their feet to worship them. People listened to everything they said and still worshiping them two, three thousand years later. Who is the richer? Yeah? The millionaires down there or Jesus or Buddha? You know already the answer, yeah? There's no need to compare ourselves with others. We have to know what we are worth inside. That's important. Why do we keep coming back even if we have remembered that we have God within us each lifetime? No, we haven't remembered. That's why we came back. Oh, what is your definition or understanding of hell? Uh -huh. I don't want to understand. <laughs> no, hell is, is when we suffer or when we cause suffering to someone else. I'm sorry if I didn't look at you this way. <laughs> you keep looking at her. <laughs> She's so attractive. <laughs> Vegetarian. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, hell is not just a place, though some people do go there to suffer because they want to clear themselves of some misconception while they were alive. You know, we are our own selves, God. So we judge ourselves. If we did some terrible things in life, Sometimes we choose to go to some like purification place, just like hospital. Cut off all the bad cells and then you become healthy again. So hell is a place of suffering and it could be in this physical planet as well when you go through intense pain mentally or physically or when you cause intense pain to someone else, even animals, that is hell. 
for that person. From my understanding, the way to practice Kuan Yin method is by meditation. I'm wondering how meditation can help to change the world to be peaceful and in harmony, an ideal world. Yes, that's a the right question. Meditation doesn't change the world. It changes you. And then if everyone changes themselves, the world becomes peaceful. We only make war because we are not peaceful ourselves, because we could not know the person next to us is God. We could not realize that we are God, and we could not realize that the one we kill, we shoot, we torture, is also God. And that's why the world is not peaceful. Once we meditate, it doesn't mean you, you have to meditate, you have to enter yourself. And I have to show you that, I have to reconnect you with your true self, then that is a true meditation, not just sitting there like a statue. You have to really reconnect with God first, and then that is true meditation. Once that has taken place, your being is changed forever. You become a peaceful example of a walking God on this planet. And even you don't do anything, people see you, they feel peace, and they want to learn what did you do to make you feel what you are. They want to be around you, they want to take advice from you, they want to learn your example, and that's how the world will become peaceful. Very logical, nothing mysterious. Is praying meditation? Yes, yes, it's a kind of meditation. But praying is only one way meditation. Like we talk, talk, talk to God, oh God, God, please do this, blah, blah, blah. but we don't hear what has says. That's why the one way. Meditation is a two way communication. We offer our pain, our sorrow, our happiness, our gratitude to God, and has in turn let us know what we should do next. Oh, the, you know, we. We have communication, we have connection with God. In praying it, just talk, talk, talk. <laughs> yeah? One person. We don't hear what God says at all. Meditation, we hear, we know. Has guides us. Has brightened our lives with thousand suns inside. Has make us shining, loving, wise, humorous, beautiful, inside out. Yeah, that's the difference. Do we move between different levels of consciousness from moment to moment, or are we at a certain level until we grow spiritually and then move up? Yeah, one by one. Just like uh, in school, yeah? One class after another. Some move quicker, some move slower. Is our destiny fixed? Uh, yes and no, yes and no. There are two kinds of destiny. One is still in the store, waiting, and the other one is already written for this lifetime. And that's why you're born in certain family and have to walk the way you do and experience pain, pleasure the way you do. But even then, you can correct that. Once we go into a higher level, we can look down and see what's wrong in our lives, and we can fix different departments and make our life better. That's why meditation people, they become happier and their lives smoother, they clearer, you know, everything better for them automatically. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all the things shall be added into you. That's what it means. Can you please teach me how to love? I can't, but you can teach yourself by going in the ocean of love, which you are, by remembering it, by going back into it, swimming in it every day, saturating yourself with blessings from heaven, be loved by God, feel loved by our Father, then you will be loving automatically. I can't teach you, not even in a thousand years, because you are love incarnated. You are already love. No one can teach you. You just awaken, remember, walk the way you should be as a loving being, as a representative of God, then you will know love. This is in three parts. What is a noble idea? What should we do continuously in order to fulfill the noble idea in our mind? And then, in order to work in a big company and make lots of money, is it this not a noble idea? Oh, it is. 
It is. depends on what kind of company and depends on what you do with the money you earn. The noble idea is to know God. That's the noblest idea. And everything else follows. It's okay to earn money. You have to take care of this temple. <laughs> take care of God inside, yeah? And you have to take care of your friends, your family, your wife, your kids. It is a noble idea to earn money, take care of your loved ones, yeah? And, by the way, knowing God. If just uh, earning money to take care of this physical body and their physical body is not enough, that's all, okay? You have to know God and work yes. at the same time. I am knowing God and working, earning money too. I use the money in different ways and I'm very happy with it. Earning money is good, very noble. I'm proud of my money <laughs> because a lot of people need it. I'm always happy when I can give somebody something. It's a very noble feeling. If a person who in a previous life has done some bad things, what should he do to liberate in this life? And where can he liberate to and for how long? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you should do is to just know yourself. Okay? It doesn't matter how bad you have been in the past. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long this uh, hall has been dark. Tonight, they just lit the light and everything is brilliant again. Even if it has been dark here for 300 years, it doesn't matter at all. Get enlightened and everything else is clear. Hmm? Why is God so hidden, so hard to realize or hard to find? Has it's not. My God has is dying to come out to shake hands with you. <laughs> it's just you don't look for him. Quiet yourself like... 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, two hours a day. And then yes. he appears immediately. Yeah? Just look into where God is and don't look into the world. Meditation means we retire from the world for a while. Yeah? It doesn't mean go into Himalaya, but retire inside. Forget the world, forget every trouble for a while. And then remember God, then God will come. How do we know that we are one? How do we know we are complete when we give so much and ask for nothing more but true acceptance? Is this a sign of not knowing oneself? We only know we are one when we are enlightened. Anything else nobody can explain to us. Once we meditate, we inside the spiritual experience, we will see that, just like I see you, that we are one. Yes, honey? Finito? Yes. Cool. Finito. Yes, good. Thank you so much for your love and your patience. Thank you. <laughs> you are a wonderful audience. You can take some fruit if you like to. You've been sitting so long, maybe you feel tired and dry. They are yours. <laughs> Thank you and God bless you. God already does. <laughs>
give to all, okay? Just symbolic, all right? You go on and get it yourself. Yeah. The kid, kid. <laughs> oh, that's good. Lady, here. here. Let her, let her. Oh. They all fly and then the apple. <laughs> 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 I think I just Hey, father. Thank you. I just, I will just drop it and give it. Please, for you, help yourself. Please, it just feels the time, okay? I would 
You share all this, yeah? <laughs> Make it dry and hang it there, yeah? Okay. Some people put them in tea. I don't recommend because <laughs> some flowers, I don't know, they're safe. Mm. Thank you, Dad. Once, uh, sit if you want here, yeah, take the flower and give, put it over here. Put it here. Hey, <laughs> baby. You can help yourself to the candy here if you want. Thank you. Kiss it. Wow. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys, if you didn't come to the stage, but here it's fine. So, yeah, leave it there. Let me blow something. They like it. <laughs> How come you are so good? You know why you are so good? Because you are me. Yeah. We get on fabulously well because we are one. Huh? Right. You know, the nature of the soul is not that, not that I am here and I have one soul in here. It's not like that. My soul is bigger than just in here. It might be all over here. It might be all me, you understand? But it looks different. Uh, I know, I know, it's not like, okay, God is one and everybody is one with God. It's not in that sense. It's in a sense that one individual can have a great soul that encompasses many so-called bodies. Understand? So we can happen to identify just like each other. Just like sometimes we have two persons but they think exactly the same thing at the same moment. That is because that is one soul. Not because they are one with God or they are one with each other, but they are one soul. Just like twins. You see, just like soulmates, something like that. The soulmates don't necessarily mean only one. I mean a lot, a lot. Of them. It can be a lot. Because some great souls, they encompass a lot, a lot of other beings for their own purpose. And for we feel like brothers and sisters, we feel like one. Sometimes you feel very good with your sister or your brother, your mother, your father, because that's you. You make it become family, but it's only one. One soul. It's a many individuals. Repeat? No. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. But that's why sometimes we say, I have affinity with that person. Oh, she is my soulmate, he's my soulmate. Because it's you. It is really you. I mean, that's your individual soul group in one soul. See what I mean? Apart from that, we are one with God and one with everybody else. We have also individual souls which can house many big group of people. It's just one soul. But it looks different. No, huh? no capito, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, you do understand. Yes. So that's why sometimes we feel so good with a group of people. See, the more we are with them, the more we feel strengthened because we are at home with ourselves. We are together, we peace together, you see. No wonder, huh? No wonder we work so well, huh? Can you imagine, you and me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. But how come I'm the only beautiful one in this? <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Okay. Don't tell anybody. I'm very humble. Right. I love you so much. Uh, if I don't come see you, it's not because I don't love you, okay? <laughs> yeah, but also because I don't feel the separation. Maybe you do. Sometimes I do miss you a lot. 
some people, especially some people, if I have known a long time, you know, uh, uh, yeah. even like one of the resident die or something, I know I can see her anytime, but it's different. See what I mean? It's different, like, I cannot keep calling her coming down here, visit me, you know, it's not fair. But if, when we're physically together, we can see me. And sometimes it's uh, so nice, so nice people that I also want to stay there with them forever. And just like for example, now I invited some um, representatives, some contact persons in my rooms, and we share some food, eat together. Well, they eat together. <laughs> <laughs> I share some food, they eat. Together. And it's just so nice. It feels like family. And I feel like they're so good, and I also love to be around good people. It makes you feel good too. It makes you feel life is worth living, and everything you do is really worthwhile. It's really, really nice. So I also did not want them to live, and I also did not want to live in your city. I just get sentimental like that. And perhaps you do feel like that when we are not together. Huh? And in some moments like that, I understand how you feel. But otherwise, most of the time, I don't feel the separateness between us at all. And I do not feel that the world needs me, even. I told you that many times. But it's difficult for you to, to understand. 